a look at the new California garden, some harvest we made this month, some things for you to do in your garden this month, and a lot more in today's episode of California Gardening. We will begin with a garden tour, we will look at all the harvests we made this month, we will then look at some things to do, we have the recipe section where we will show you a cool recipe. So let's begin with the garden tour of the new California garden. Our backyard is almost completed and you can see we have a lot of space now, the patio area is set up, the bench area is set up and best of all the gardening area or the raised bed area. Now we've kept about 3 feet distance between the beds and that's enough space for us to walk around and work around the beds and at the corner there's some storage area. The fruit trees are planted along the sides. We have the patio area as well, the paver area here and fruit trees are all dwarf fruit trees. They are all short growing trees and you can see that they are all along the sides. And this area, the raised bed area does get plenty of sunlight. As you can see there are 5 raised beds. In the first one we have just started planting some miscellaneous vegetables followed by tomatoes in the second bed. As you can see we planted 8 tomatoes as of now. We have some peppers, lot of pepper varieties and with still some space available to add on some more plants. We have okra. The okra seedlings are also now emerging. And finally we have onions in the first bed and half of the bed is still empty. So all in all you can see the layout. I think this layout worked out the best. We had a good combination of growing area as well as some area for the kids to play and while still having some good amount of area for doing our vegetable gardening. And here you can take another aerial view of how the backyard looks like and the side yard as well. So there's still a lot of work to be done. We will continue to plant more plants, more vegetables in the garden in the upcoming months. But that's how the garden looks like as of April 2020. And this is how the garden looks like during the night time. And now let's look at all the harvests we made this month beginning with peppers. We had our bird's eye chili peppers growing under the grow lights inside the house till now. But now that we have some space we decided to move this pepper plant outdoors. And you can see that this plant is now yielding us a lot of chili peppers. Moving on to the husky cherry red tomatoes. This plant was a very small plant when it was growing indoors. And after we transplanted it into this container outdoors. It's now grown to a very huge plant. And the husky cherry red tomato is an excellent cherry tomato variety. As you can see it's loaded with fruits right now, loaded with tomatoes. And we're going to start harvesting these tomatoes. We have been getting a few tomatoes off and on every few days. But here you can see we did harvest a lot of tomatoes this month in the month of April. And I'm still waiting for all the other tomato plants to grow. And these cherry tomatoes will hide from you. They'll be hidden inside. So just make sure you look around the plant very well. And get all the tomatoes that have ripened. And these tomatoes taste excellent when they ripen on the plant. And as you can see the plant is also loaded with flowers. So we should be getting a lot of tomatoes very soon. And here you can see some more cherry tomatoes. And this is growing in this whiskey barrel container in a very simple potting medium of a mix of peat moss, perlite and compost. And you can see the harvest here looks beautiful. Now let's look at the things to do in your garden this month. The first thing we will look at is spraying citrus plants. Now we use horticultural oil or mineral oil as you can see to spray our citrus plants. And all you do is just add a tablespoon of this oil in a gallon of water and then spray your plants. And we are spraying our Kishu mandarin tree here. And remember that this is an organic product. It can be safely used in organic gardening. Which is why I love this product. It doesn't contain any chemicals. All it does is it smothers the insects with the oil that's present in the product. And this is a sprayer that we're using. I'll provide a link to this excellent sprayer. I've been using this for quite some time now. And you can buy it on Amazon. It's an excellent quality sprayer. It has a lot of force or a lot of pressure that can be very beneficial when spraying plants. 
and this is our Washington Naval Orange tree which also is being sprayed. The next thing we will look at is preparing your raised beds. Now we do have new raised beds and it will take us quite some time to build up the soil and as you can see here the soil is quite dry. So all we are really doing is we are raking up the soil, breaking up the top surface of the soil and we'll be adding some worm castings. Now other than compost which also retains a lot of moisture, worm castings is excellent for retaining moisture in the soil. And as you can see here this soil is quite sandy and does need some compost or some worm castings to hold moisture. In this case we are using the Vermistera standard worm castings and about one bag of these worm castings is enough for half a raised bed. And what we will do now is just rake this into the soil, the top part of the soil. Now there are two ways to mix this in. One way is to use a cultivator like you're seeing here and mix it into the first few inches of the soil. Now this helps if the top layer of the soil is dry and you're trying to add some moisture retention properties. And you can also rake it into the soil. As you can see here, we're using a garden fork to rake the soil in. And what this does is it helps improve the nutrient quality of the soil by pushing the vermi compost further to the soil where it's available to the plant roots. So depending on what you want to achieve, the earthworm castings are an excellent way to add good quality organic nutrients to your garden as well as improve microbial activity, improve the quality of your soil. And as I mentioned several times in my previous videos as well, you will need to add compost or organic amendments to your garden continuously over a period of time to build your soil. So this soil is just beginning to build up and eventually it will build up into very good quality soil. Another form of nutrition that you can provide to your plants is using worm tea. Now we are using the worm tea solution as you can see we just eyeball it and put it into the 2 gallon container. I usually put about a cup or so approximately for 2 gallons and that's a good amount of worm tea for most of your plants. So all we really do is take the worm tea and then mix it with water. I just fill up the watering can and then drench my plants completely. These are the tomato plants and pepper plants as well. And most of the plants do very well. They respond very well to worm tea. And what worm tea does, it helps your plants absorb all the nutrients in the soil. So for example, your soil may have a lot of nutrients. You really don't need to add any nutrients in the soil but they are just not available to your plants because your plants cannot uptake those nutrients. In that case, worm tea definitely helps. It helps your plants not only uptake all the nutrients, but also build a lot of disease resistance and a lot of vigor and a lot of strength. So adding worm tea to your plants every 15 days or so is highly recommended. Composting. This is something that every gardener should be doing on an ongoing basis. Make sure you have equal quantities of the dry matter in your compost like leaves, dried leaves, etc. As well as wet matter like kitchen scraps or grass clippings. And the way to mix this into your soil is to just dig up your soil a little bit and just mix in the compost every few months. So composting should be a continuous process. You should continuously compost things like grass clippings and dry leaves and kitchen scraps to make sure that you're getting good quality compost on an ongoing basis in your garden. And in the recipe section of the video today, just a quick tip on how to make your own turmeric powder at home. So we were drying this turmeric in the sun. This is the turmeric that was left over after making our turmeric shots. And all we are really doing is drying it in the sun and then blending it in this blender. And although you can buy turmeric powder in the store, homemade turmeric powder is really good. It's extremely fresh, extremely nice. You need a good quality blender though and I'll provide a link to this blender in the video description. And you can see the turmeric powder, it's very fresh, it's almost orange in color, not really bright yellow like you get in the grocery stores. So this is the true color of turmeric powder and this is what you should be consuming. And here is the bonus section. We spoke about a hyacinth bean seed giveaway and all you really need to do is subscribe to us on our YouTube channel like us on our Facebook page and give us one suggestion, one suggestion on what you think can be improved in our backyard in the new California garden. 
we will choose the best responses and the hyacinth bean seeds will be sent to those winners. So put in a comment below with your response and keep your responses creative and if we find your response creative or helpful, you will be chosen as a winner. So there we have it folks, that was a tour of the new California garden. I hope you liked all our garden updates. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, put them in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.